Hi, welcome to my TED Talk. Today we're going to... Wait, Co-Covid? So it's chocolate thing. Right. <clears throat> so there's no chocolate. So it's just called that. Well, I guess. Still getting paid, right? What the fu- The way I see it, there are three ways you can basically go around looking for a reenactment group that suits you. You can look for a period that interests you, you can look for a style of reenactment that interests you, or you can look for a reenactment group that is close to where you are for convenience. In days like these where petrol costs are pretty high, the cost of public transport is prohibitive for a lot of people, it's much easier to find a group that's near to you. So, here is my guide to how to get started in reenactment. Part 1. Period Specific Groups there are groups reenacting periods right the way from the Stone Age to the Vietnam War, and if you have a specific interest in a period of time and you'd like to get involved with reenacting it or recreating how it looked, period specific groups are for you. Many period specific groups exist to educate the public, to improve the way that we use research and archaeology that we have available to us, and to make recreations of time periods, clothing, equipment, food, and everyday artifacts as accurately as we can. If you're looking into a specific period, one of the best things you can do is just look around on the internet. Try googling Roman reenactment and then your town. If there's nothing there, broaden it out to your county. If there's nothing there, broaden it out to your whatever it may be, state. If there's nothing there, broaden it out to your province. And if there's nothing there, broaden it out to your country. And then email them. If you find a Roman reenactment group, for example, in Ontario. Find their Facebook page, find their website, find the contact us page, and then drop them a line. It took me literally decades to realise that you can actually just email people if you want to help them or get involved with their activities. And most of these guys are really happy to help. They want more people involved in their hobby. They want more friends to come and hang out with them. So, drop them a line. Most of this video is going to be geared towards people reenacting European and medieval impressions, but all of the tools and all of the ideas are designed to help you find a reenactment group that suits you no matter what your period. So if you want to do 18th century or World War I reenactment, do keep watching because there is going to be a lot of information that you can use. In the UK and North America, which is where I have most experience with reenactment, some of the more popular periods reenacted include Roman, Early Medieval and Viking, High Medieval, Tudor, Renaissance, British Civil Wars, so 1640s, Jacobite uprisings in the 17th and 18th centuries, Napoleonic War, American Civil War, World War I, and World War II. Those are just some of the bigger periods. Now, if you are going to join a period-specific group, be prepared for them to have rules and regulations. Period-specific groups often work for the public. And that doesn't mean they're employed, they're still hobbyists, they're still volunteers. It just means that they have public engagement at their shows. These are the guys that you see at museums and open days and places like Colonial Williamsburg. Those are public-facing historical reenactors. They're recreating the past as accurately as they can. And that means they have to base their clothes on evidence. Don't worry, that doesn't mean that if you are a new person they expect you to have a fully authentic Napoleonic war uniform. Almost all of these groups have what's called either group kit or loner garb. That stuff that they can loan out to you as a new member, or a member missing an item of clothing or armour, so that you can still take part in their events. Remember, they want you to get involved. They're not trying to stop you. There are things there to help you get involved. Now, if that doesn't suit you, or you don't really feel like having those restrictions, again, don't worry. A lot of period-specific groups don't involve the public, or don't have those kind of stringent authenticity regulations. I'm going to provide some links in the description below for a variety of different groups covering all kinds of periods, from Roman right the way through to World War II. So, have a hunt through those and see if any of those groups suit you. That brings me on to my next point, finding the right group. So there are groups out there that reenact the Romans, and obviously if you're interested in portraying a Highlander of the 1640s, you don't want to join the Ninth Legion because you will stick out like a sore thumb and everyone will wonder if you're a little bit crazy. So you have to do your homework on this. There's only so many tips you can get from weirdos like me on the internet before you actually have to just go out there, find a Facebook group, or chances are you know a reenactor. 
Reenactment is actually the second largest group participation hobby in the UK after fishing. That's right, fishing. With rods. I know. Get out there. Do a Google search. Or a Bing search. Or a... Whatever that one is that plants trees. Use that one. Plant some trees. Find a reenactment group near you that portrays the period you're interested in. It's dead simple. It's dead easy with Facebook. And it'll definitely yield some results. In fact, if you use the hashtag... Roman reenactment, Greek reenactment, or living history on Instagram, you'll get thousands and thousands of images from all over the world of people doing exactly what you want to be doing right now. You'll probably find some people, like-minded people, on Instagram, Facebook, or somewhere else on the web. So part two, styles of reenacting. This is where we get into a bit more nitty gritty. What kind of reenactment do you want to do? Do you want to do educational, public facing reenactment? Are you combat focused? Are you craft focused? Are you social focused? These questions are all things that you need to ask yourself. And I don't mean this to sound like a job interview. It just means what kind of stuff do you want to do on the weekends? Do you want to go into the forests and beat your mates up with a sword? Do you want to make interesting clothing out of period specific fabrics and authentic materials? Do you want to just eat some interesting authentic food, talk about the past, and generally have a laugh with each other. You can do all of those. You can do all of those with the same group. Now, I'm going to start with socially focused reenacting. This is reenacting amongst friends, generally without the public involved. And that is a really good way of getting started in reenactment. A lot of people stick with that for their entire lives because it's just a fun, relaxed, easygoing way of enjoying the past, the way it looked, and the way its food tasted. If that's for you, I highly recommend looking into the Society for Creative Anachronism, the SCA. The SCA is, I think, the largest reenactment group in the world, although they don't really call themselves reenactors so much as Scadians, players, or just people who hang out together. They don't have any authenticity regulations. The only stipulation they have is that you portray pre-1600 in your impression. They mostly focus on medieval Europe, because in California in the 1960s somebody decided to have a cool medieval party and everybody came dressed as medieval Europeans, but there are SCA groups all over the globe, and if you are interested in the social side, much much more than the public, or the educational for the public side, go for the SCA is my basic tip for you. Other societies also have a social side. I'm a member of the SCA, I'm also a member of Regia Anglorum, and I've also been a member of the Sealed Knot and a few other reenactment groups, and they all had a social side to them. Just because your society does education, or public events, or big old battles in the middle of country houses or castles somewhere, it doesn't mean that they don't have a social side. In fact, almost every reenactment group that I've ever heard of is perfectly happy for you to just turn up, not talk to the public, do the craft you want, make the food you want, sew the clothes you want, and just generally hang out. It's a good excuse to go to some fun places that you normally wouldn't get the chance to go to for free, in a lot of cases. So don't be put off by a reenactment group saying that they do educational events. It doesn't mean they're not a social group and you won't have an incredible time having fun with them at the weekends. But if you are 100% not wanting to do any of the public facing stuff, I'd say go for a group like the SCA. Having said that, if you like the education side, and I really love teaching the public about history, that's why I do these videos on YouTube, I would suggest that you look for a more living history based group. Living history is basically a catch-all term for people who try to recreate the past as accurately as possible. The group I'm doing my Viking stuff with at the moment, Regia Anglorum, is very much driven by accuracy and authenticity. So we have regulations on the quality of clothing that people can wear to public events, we have kit guides, we have help groups, we have archaeologists, we do all kinds of independent research. And of course, we contribute to CocoVid. If that's the kind of style that you're interested in, then there are loads of those out there, and they tend to be period specific. People like the Napoleonic Association, the English Civil War Society, those kinds of large groups are generally really visible online. They have Facebook groups, they have websites, they have Twitter feeds, they have Instagram profiles. You can search those out and see if what they do, and the way that they do it, suits you. If you like the idea of turning up in front of hundreds of people, members of the public, teaching kids how swords work, 
or teaching people how to grind f flour from grain or spin wool or weave wool, then a period specific or education focused group is going to be for you. Now, one of the easiest ways to get in with those groups is to go to one of their events. If you happen to go to a reenactment or you see that one is happening near you in the summer at the weekend, turn up. Go and ask somebody, anybody behind the ropes if you can have a business card or a website or an email address because you'd really like to learn more about what they do and if it would suit you. You get in touch with them, you probably will get an invite to either a group meeting or a training session or a crafting session. And if it suits you, great. You've got a gang of new friends who are all eager to help you get involved in a cool new hobby. If it doesn't suit you, that's fine. I've gone to a few group meetings for groups that didn't gel with me. The vibe didn't really seem to work for what I was trying to do with my weekends. And that's absolutely fine. Nobody's forcing you to get involved. If anybody is trying to force you to get involved with a group that you're not interested in, cut them out of your life immediately. They are worthless to you. So the next type of group is the combat focused group. And these kinds of groups are combat focused. They're interested in this kind of stuff a lot more than they are in this kind of stuff. Having said that, an awful lot of the previous types of group also have a combat focus. Regia Anglorum has its warrior system. The Sealed Knot has musketeers and pikemen and sword training and cannon training. The SCA has heavy fighters and fencers. The Napoleonic Society is obviously made up of Napoleonic war soldiers. So if you go to one of these educational or period groups, you're just as likely to get some fun fighting out of it as you are going to a social group. However, there are also groups that only focus on the fighting. They are only interested in historical martial arts. HEMA, Historical European Martial Arts, have become hugely popular in the last 20 years. And an awful lot of HEMA groups kind of call themselves reenactment groups. Now, they may study fecht books and other kinds of period fighting manuals, but they're not really recreating the past so much as they are figuring out how people in the past killed each other which is interesting in itself, and there are lots of interesting YouTube channels like that. I'm actually going to link to a couple of historical European fighting channels in the description below so that you guys can go and have a look at what they do. Obviously, some of them really care about their clothes and their equipment looking and feeling right and being super accurate. But if you're not so interested in that and you're more interested in the fighting without being strictly adherent to rules, Again, go for something maybe like the SCA or one of the historical European martial arts groups that also lets you dress up. That's totally fine. If that's your jam, that's what you want to do with your weekends, go hit people in a sports hall somewhere. Sounds like fun. Invite me next time. Part three. Some other issues. So we've looked at the type of group and the period that you might want to reenact. The third thing I want to talk about in this video is some of the issues you might encounter. Let's start with the culture. Reenactment culture is pretty overwhelmed with fighting an awful lot of the time. I know I mentioned that combat specific groups existed, but I also said that every other group does fighting. A large part of what interests us about the past is the conflict, and that usually means armed conflict. So if you're really not interested in the combat, it may seem like there's nowhere for you to fit. And that sucks. That is something that does happen. I know an awful lot of reenactors of the 1770s and 80s who feel like they don't belong because everybody there just wants to either be a redcoat or an American soldier or a militiaman or a minuteman. And you might not want to do that. You might just be interested in the religion or the clothing of the period. Heck, you might not want to be involved at all in any of the conflict side of the 1770s and 80s. You might just want to portray somebody who happens to be living in that period somewhere where there's no war going on. Good luck. But if you are a part of a group that is making you feel like you have to be involved in combat, get out now. Get out immediately and never, ever go back to them. You should never, ever be made to feel like combat has to be a part of reenactment. You do not have to do fighting. No reenactment group on the planet does fully authentic reenactment fighting. Why? Because none of them kill each other. And it does suffer from serious toxic mas masculinity issues in a lot of groups. And if you're running a group that is telling people that they have to fight to be a part of your reenactment society, stop it. Get your bloody act together and stop being such a child.
So if you want to do combat, fantastic. Come join me on the battlefield one day. Hopefully you'll say that you watched my videos and that they helped you as you're hitting me with a sword. And then we'll go and have a pint together in the pub afterwards. That's a brilliant part of reenactment. I love it. If you've ever seen the York Viking Festival, or you've been to any similar events like the Battle of the Nations, you'll know that most of the time, these fighters go on the field, wallop each other, knock seven bells out of one another, and then immediately hug, have a laugh, and eat and drink together afterwards. And it's wonderful that we can do that. It's cathartic, it gets all that pent-up energy out of you in a safe and controlled way, most of the time. If you do want to get involved in reenactment combat, please make sure that your group has a safety officer, a training officer, a medic, a first aider, or a similar group of people like that to make sure you get good training. Lack of training is where injuries come in, and I'd hate for any of you guys to follow any of these tips, find a group that looks really cool at an event, join them, and suddenly get a concussion on your first time out with them. Please, please do be careful. Take it easy. We're not really Vikings. You're not a Viking, Trevor, okay? You're an accountant. You have a kid, and you have to go to the office on Monday for that presentation. Don't turn up with your arm in a sling, all right? Nobody will think it's cool in middle management. Just chill. Chill, Trevor. Jeez. It's always Trevor. One of my amazing subscribers has asked me a really great question that I want to answer in this video, and that is the problem of accessibility for disabled people in reenactment. Now, reenactment should be accessible for all. I have friends who use wheelchairs to get around. When they turn up to an event, they will normally sit in a chair or they will sit on their wheelchair that's been draped in beautiful cloth to make it look more like a throne. And that way, if they need to be mobile, they can be. And if they just want to chill and sit down for the weekend, they can do that as well. It should be about making the reenactment work for you, not making you work for the period in a lot of cases. Once again, if you join a social forward group that doesn't have many regs, like the SCA, that's not going to be a problem. Most of the SCA people I know will bend over backwards to make sure that you feel accepted, included, and able to have fun. Because it shouldn't be that you're disabled, it should be that you have a different ability. And once again, if you're running a reenactment society that isn't letting people with different abilities join, get your bloody act together. I hate you. So one of my subscribers also asked me a really, really good question, which is, they live in Japan, they're not Japanese, how can they get into reenactment there? Now I know that in places where historical culture is also present culture, it can be really, really difficult to not feel like you're practicing cultural appropriation. Nobody wants to be a Westerner cringily dressing as a Japanese person as Japanese people walk up to you and ask you questions about your kit. That's embarrassing. And also an awful lot of white people look kind of bad in their Japanese kit, but there are exceptions obviously, and some people have absolutely every right to do that. They've sought permission, they've been granted permission, they've been given the honor of doing that. Thankfully, I think that this question is related to non-Japanese reenactment portrayals in Japan. So I think that this person wants to be a reenactor, not portraying a Japanese persona. And thankfully, there are several SCA groups in Japan, and the SCA specializes in European medieval reenactment. So I've put a couple of links in the description where hopefully you'll be able to go on their Facebook pages, you'll be able to send them a message, find a group semi close to you. Hopefully they'll be on a Shinkansen and you can just get the train to them nice and quickly. And you'll be able to get involved in a reenactment there. And the beautiful thing about the SCA is you don't really have to turn up in period clothes when you first start. You can turn up, start a sewing project, learn some skills, get some loan kit. They might invite you over to their house for what they call a convocation, basically a, a meet and greet and craft event. And most reenactment groups do this. So this goes for anywhere else around the world as well. If you are struggling to find a reenactment group, generally there will be a large group, there'll be a global group, or there'll be a period group that you can find. I know there are Vikings in Japan. I know there are Vikings in Russia. There are uh, Vikings in South Africa. There's a 14th century French reenactment group that I know uh, of in New South Wales, in Australia. Uh, we have branches of my early medieval group in the USA. Uh, Canada has got all kinds of Romans over there. They've also got some incredible craftspeople that I'm very jealous they've got over there. 
your maple leaves and your tinnies. So I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, if you are somewhere else in the world and you really, really, really can't find any kind of reenactment group, start one up. Nobody says you don't get to start a reenactment group. It doesn't say that anywhere. If you want to make a tunic with your mates, stand around together in a field, you're basically a reenactment group. Now, it gets complex when fighting and public people and the insurance involved gets thrown into the mix, but if you want to portray the past, go and do it. Tell them Jimmy sent you. <laughs> so one of the biggest restrictions in reenactment is money. Reenactment is a hobby, hobbies cost money, and it can cost as much or as little money as you want to put into it. The clothing that I'm wearing right now, I probably spent in total about £200 on. You can spend money on fabric, you can spend money on accessories, jewellery, weapons, armour, shoes, food, pottery, anything you can imagine, you can spend money on it. I am a firm believer in starting small. So if you want to start out in reenactment, making your own clothing, buy a cheap fabric. You can buy linen for £30 a metre, or you can buy a 50-50 linen cotton mix for £5 a metre. It looks like linen, it smells like linen. If somebody is more than a foot away from you, they won't be able to tell the difference. And once again, if you're in a society that doesn't have strict regulations on material, go for it. You can spend £300 on shoes, or you can spend £30 on shoes. Or you can make your own shoes for a tenner with materials. Any one of those options could produce for you a nice, authentic-looking, period pair of shoes. You've saved some money for a nice pair of shoes, good for you. If you haven't done that yet, don't worry about it. There's a massive second-hand market for reenactment clothing and equipment. And again, your group almost certainly has stuff they can lend to you to get you started. And they might be happy to lend that kit to you for a year or more. I guess that's the big three. Figure out which period you're interested in reenacting. Figure out whether you want to be a Roman or a Greek hoplite or a medieval peasant or the king of Sicily. Secondly, figure out what type of reenactment you want to do. Do you want to be a fighter? Do you want to be a living historian? Do you want to be an experimental archaeologist? Do you want to be a tailor? Do you want to be a chef? And then, third and most importantly of all, just get out there. Get on the internet. Search for reenactments in your area. Search for events and groups. Go and look through the links I've put in the description. Email a few people from that list. Send messages to people on Twitter and YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. They're all happy to help out. That's why a lot of us do this. So good luck. Get out there. I hope you really enjoy your new hobby. So thank you very much indeed for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope this has been useful to you guys. If it has been, I'm very pleased. If it hasn't been, keep it to your damn self. I hope you're enjoying the rest of CocoVid and uh, all of the other wonderful videos and events we've got. We've got panels, we've got instructional videos, we've got opinion pieces, we've got all kinds of amazing things. And if you've got this far through the video, I think you've earned your badge. So stay tuned. Don't be going anywhere. Because here it comes.